beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Jesus is teaching prayer so that when you go to the place of prayer, you are not just shadow boxing and dissipating spiritual energy that cannot produce results. This is largely what we do. Just because we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy, we convince ourselves that on the strength of the enormity of the energy that is dissipated, we are making contact in the spirit. It may not be so. One man prayed and a territory was shot it was it was deprived of rain one correct prayer then we talk about the subject of kingdom advancement listen if you're a man of God here you may want to write some of these things down and build a catalog of your spiritual your mentorship system to the members this this is these are the truths that members should come to receive they are not opinions, they are doctrines. These are the truths, the pillars upon which the maturity of the saints depend on. Kingdom advance. If believers are not, king, are not taught kingdom advance, we are going to live purposeless lives, acquiring things that have no eternal value. What gives credence to subjects like prosperity and the rest is kingdom. Subjects like prosperity, health, advancement, success, they find their correct bearing when they are, the subjects are dealt with with respect to kingdom. If kingdom is not in view, it is risky and dangerous, even destructive to mentor people and teach them these things. Because all of these things are spiritual arsenals that were supposed to help the believer to become efficient to an end. The end is thy kingdom come. Are we still together then we talk about subjects like purpose and destiny never downplay the fact that believers need to find fulfillment in their lives they will not indefinitely just be career people they will not indefinitely just be church goers for many years sooner or later they will have to confront the subject of meaning what is my life about nobody will waste his time indefinitely no matter how sincere you are as a man of god as a preacher as a spiritual platform you must be able to mentor the people to find meaning for their lives it is lack of meaning that exposes people to all kinds of violence when people do not live for a cause that is bigger than their needs they can become prey to the devil purpose and destiny very powerful it defines the coordinate for your focus it gives you discipline it helps to channel your energy constructively so you wake up in the morning justifiably so and you sleep late you sleep in the night with joy in your heart knowing that you're making constructive advancement then we have to talk about 
truths like the end times the reality of the afterlife is a subject that many people may not want to touch the bible says if our hope is only in this life this world it says we are of all men most miserable to understand the gravity of that statement you have to examine how miserable men look because the bible says you are a miserable man at any level is not a good sight and then the bible says you are of all men most miserable it is true that jesus is coming back and my goodness there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it believers must be able to find comfort why because in a congregation like this sincerely speaking even though it is not our intention as time progresses people will lost will lose loved ones is that true people will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason and there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point it takes more than an impulsive comfort for two three days people must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life it is on the strength of that you can now say like paul for for me to live is christ and to die is gain so if you declare long life it's not out of fear it's because you need time to make kingdom come happen but if at all the flight comes you go with joy knowing that you have cheated death already is god helping us these are the doctrinal truths these are like spiritual classes schools of the spirit that you have to pass through you cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro the bible says it is for this that the bible says ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 10 to this end the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the maturing the equipping of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit it says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive stability comes through doctrine then we will not also neglect matters of life like the economic system of the kingdom look at me did you know that the kingdom of god has an economic system that must be studied there are different systems all across this cosmos but god has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints it is irresponsible and i submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of god to have the privilege of being with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting god to come there are school fees to be paid there are real issues that pertain unto life and if believers are not taught they will have to adopt any option that is available and most of the options you would have to trade your soul in exchange so he said what shall it profit a man if you will gain these are business languages gain the world and lose your soul it says i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health there is an economic system designed for the kingdom and i will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of christ is that most times our doctrines are inaccurately communicated that means it's it's is garnished with a plethora of imbalances so on one hand we have people who teach believers for instance that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing and that is wonderful there is a place for that and then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional so believers continue to obey the spiritual laws the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings but the natural laws are they are right they are responsible for the sustenance if you do not know this you will keep having short-lived testimonies one breakthrough and then after five years another one comes the economic system of the kingdom
then of course we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships family life we are relational beings the command be fruitful is a very serious command be fruitful there does not just mean have children be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies through relationships your business your job your work with God and until we understand principles of relationship prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep canceling out of believers lives there are many people who receive prophetic words may God connect you to destiny help us may God lift you they say amen but not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships they will be spiritual pray in tongues but if you do not have this as a pastor as a man of God you will never have sustainable membership because the membership affects people before your members and there are there, there are principles not only spiritual principles psychological principles that must be in place let me tell you human beings are not stupid they will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths if you are with me say amen Probably God is revealing to someone right now. This is just an introduction. Whilst you've heard me speak, God is telling you, you see the area you have ignored. The area of loophole, the area of, of ignorance, the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of Satan. Now, we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously, within a week, Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time no it means that he has actively been mentored believers must submit themselves to mentorship not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men I'm talking of mentorship, a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured. This is the assignment of doctrine. Are we blessed? To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Yes, the prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. It's a real prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see hallelujah two men were with the resurrected Christ on the way to Emmaus just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter you can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things you are growing they were with Jesus and yet did not recognize him but the Bible says when the bed was broken their eyes open can you pray whilst you are seated Lord open my eyes let this be a journey of transformation let this be a journey of growth please pray hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so for tonight just spare me a few minutes and we're done listen week in week out when you come did you know why we pray that God should bring people we don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd it's more than that it's a passion to reach as many people there are 3.2 million people 
demographically speaking in this city if we're unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them we are wasting your time and we're wasting God's time <laughs> yes you have to believe this so when you are dragging someone to church you are not trying to help a ministry grow you are looking at him and like a doctor you can scan through his life while he comes to say my life you can see the spiritual gaps you you know the laws he's breaking in an instant and you know if god does not help this man just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem because the truths that this person needs to learn are many it is on the that is what sponsors your compassion when you draw someone to the house of God you are already excited because more than an instant miracle he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth so he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding and he would thank you for it while the Word of God is coming he can see the gaps in his life there is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men is the grace that causes all men to see so you can see your life in light of this truth and you can say wow i now see why my church is not growing it's not because i'm not from this city i now see this may be what i may be doing wrong and then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word you are not ashamed of god exposing your area of growth it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday and you receive it with truth then you go back like the foxes of samson and you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom this is what i seek by the spirit of god that will happen in our lives that week in let me tell you the truth i give you a guarantee if you come here week in week out and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth i am wasting your time please look for something important and do with your life Are we together many times we teach that all you need one encounter with the word is all you need that's a very sincere statement but that's incomplete many people have encountered the word for many years it is the truth that is accurately taught that you receive with understanding and you engage appropriately that produces for you not the truth available access to truth does not transform no it must be accurately taught then it must be understood then it must be received by faith the principles contained therein applied diligently then you can commit God's integrity to perform hallelujah let's talk about spiritual growth tonight let's start from there where we're starting from the very foundation this is a new work and so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us. If we're together, say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Please, let's rush. We have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight. And then we pray. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. We're discussing the subject of spiritual growth. Please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside. Ready? Read when i was a child uh -huh, i spake as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things please keep that scripture there paul is admonishing the church in corinth part of his apostolic ministry and he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom that you know a child number one by how you speak you know a child number two by your level of spiritual understanding are we together you know a child by your thought process because your life is a reflection of your thought so we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man the way that you speak your degree of comprehension and the way you think the way you process spiritual things when I was a child he said this also talks about transition when i was once upon a time he was a child this is a very powerful message because it means men can grow it's a it's a revelation 
I can come out of my former self into a new version of me. That means the version you saw last week. While you are talking about that one, I have grown. You are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick. You are talking about the version that is ignorant. And that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom. Very powerful. So you can see one who is weak. He may even come out for salvation prayer. And you watch that person and you're like, wow. When is this guy going to understand spiritual things? Just give the person the atmosphere of growth. And sometimes as little as weeks. Under a very correct system of growth. You will be surprised what will happen to that person. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Understood as a child. And I thought as a child. But when I became a man, what happened? I pushed childish things. Childish speaking, childish understanding, childish thinking. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Write this down, please. Growth refers to increase in size, increase in capacity, increase in convictions, increase in resources. Growth refers to increase of all kinds increase in size for instance increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources god expects believers to grow the bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow god desires that we grow biologically god desires that we grow intellectually God desires that we grow career-wise for career people. God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on. But for this, for tonight, the subject of focus is spiritual growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus grew or he increased. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased, the Bible says. Jesus, your Jesus, had to grow. He increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with man hallelujah write this down please spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian not necessarily luke chapter 11 and verse 52 spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010, the, the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth. Listen to this. Jesus is speaking to the scribes. He says, woe to you lawyers, for you have taken the key of knowledge. You've been here for a long time. You have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering. Most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call. And you hear people say things like, I have been a Christian for 20 years. Now that's worth, being, uh, that's worth um, our applause. I'm not downplaying it. But I'm saying just because you gave your life to Christ, it's like someone who bought a car in 2000. And just because a car is in his house, he tells you he's a driver. No. The presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Write this point again. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. That means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities, it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually. Paul was teaching his son Timothy doctrine and he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth wow preach preacher wow wonderful and just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time just because you've been around crusades you've been around great programs when they say who are those who have been in church for a long time you will stand up but when we look through your life we do not see the indices 
that represent spiritual growth is God helping us there is a tragedy please look up there is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth if you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit you will not aspire for higher dimensions because you see many times and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we're exposed to many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into God it's like the most important thing is to give your life to Jesus like we say and the moment you have received Jesus that's all right after all whatever it is it is heaven there are severe consequences for remaining at that level biologically speaking mothers when you give birth to a child you don't flog that child from day one for not walking you give him some allowance but after a year, two years, three years, you find out your child cannot walk, your child cannot talk, that becomes a medical issue. Is that true? I have put down here three, three tragedies that would befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth. Please walk with me. Let's hurry up. Is God blessing us tonight? Number one, the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. Look up please. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Do you know what this means? That means even though you have received the Zoe life, watch this, you have received the life of God, it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically. The riches of that which you have received that resides in Christ is released through knowledge. And if you do not contend for spiritual growth, you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life. So, two believers, come. This is my great generals. Just come close to me. By the way, this is Sam, ladies and gentlemen. For many of you, you've heard me say Sam. And those of you who have been blessed by the song, you reign. Elohim. Here's the person who wrote the song. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Let me have your attention again. Watch this. Now, did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time? Are we together? filled with the holy spirit at the same time but this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system and five years down the line you will see the quality of his christian experience all wise you will see that the reality the riches the 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 manifestation of that life that he has so received when you look at it you will see the quality of his life this man even though truly he's given his life to christ you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of Christ in his life. The difference is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth, whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion. Decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to grow spiritually so the potential the potential that this life of god that we have this divine life is released as we grow if you do not grow it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life but nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in christ are we together tragedy number two what happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 now i say that an heir an heir means a partaker of a throne a a, a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be lord of all look up please 
the bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of christ and not contending for growth your results will not change the dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth oh, oh, oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? Is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. We're reading to verse 14, verse 12 now. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 13, for everyone that useth milk, everyone that is a child is what? Unskillful. Look up. Let me explain what this means to you. When you watch a consultant, when he looks at a patient, while the patient is talking, all of a sudden, the, the myriads of medical truths that he knows, everything is working in an instant. He looks at this and says, oh, I remember. There, we have one in a million of these cases. However, I think I know what to do about it on the strength of his mastery. A student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited. So he can do his best, although he's a doctor in the making. He can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much. This is what it means to be unskillful. So if you do not grow spiritually, you can't be a blessing. Because when people speak to you, you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them. So you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better. And the Bible says you are unskillful. You are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery. When you grow spiritually, if a family calls you as a man of God, we're in trouble. What is the trouble? All doors are closed uh -huh, immediately. The scriptures that will bail them out comes to you. You can almost tell them, I know what is wrong. I know what is wrong. It's powerful to know how to help people. Not just how to sympathize with people. You are a blessing to the degree to which you can help. Someone comes to you now and says, I hear that you are a member of this great ministry. Nothing is working in my life. Delays. There is, there's no restoration. The moment you hear restoration, you know all through scripture, everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back. So restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic. So you don't just tell that person, let's pray. God help him. That's a careless prayer. You seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice. They are taken for a prayer and none say it, restore. This is what it means to be skillful. Someone comes to you and says, I am gifted, I'm a graduate, but doors are not opening up. I have a business. And you know exactly what is there. Because you see, James 2.26 says, a body without a spirit is dead. The business is a body. Where is the spirit that gives it life? So you know what to introduce. Are you getting blessed? If you refuse to grow spiritually, you become unskillful. You cannot help yourself and you cannot help people. This is the tragedy with the poor. It's responsible for what outcome. 
mastery in the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes so when you see people and they cry you know what spiritual law to help them with like a doctor when a patient says i'm running temperature and um, i've not been able to eat i even threw up you are not a doctor but help me guess what you think is wrong who taught you that although you are not a doctor notice you did not say run his stomach but don't you know that cholera he also vomits why didn't you say cholera because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this this is how to help the person this can happen to you spiritually listen to me i'm teaching you this so after the grace some of you will run home and say come i found what the problem is i know exactly why this family is not rising yes sir yes sir with accuracy you can know when mama comes to say are you seeing this i went to bed and i had a dream i saw someone speaking to me and he said in this family for the last hundred years nobody has risen and everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them what is the excellency of your spiritual investment but the issue is not just saying let's pray don't mind the devil you say that thing you would die like a chicken because many people have arrogantly made bold claims don't stand before pharaoh until you see the burning bush if you have not seen the burning bush leave pharaoh alone your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina you can stand before pharaoh and say toss say yet not me the one i met let my people go because Pharaoh is stubborn. God does not hide the fact that Pharaoh is stubborn. He will say, oh, God spoke, go. Mm -mm. He will say, who is that? You have to show him a token of your encounter that I really met him. So you don't talk like people who are not born again. When believers are lamenting, what is wrong? You go to scripture. What are the truths? The assignment of men of God is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals. On the strength of that, you can now go. If you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say, except I am not this, you will not rise. You don't need to start talking as if you are not born ah, mm, mm, and leave him in peace that man you see you should even be pitying him while he's speaking based on what you know if you actually engage what you know you know that it will cause more destruction for that man so you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness listen sit down please don't be excited for nothing look at me this is how dominion is produced dominion is not just an impartation is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom you surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots they make you a wonder to behold so when you say you are matured in the spirit it's not just by physical stature it's not by the huskiness of the voice it's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together you have fine-tuned them they are like weapons of war you shoot them with the accuracy of the benjamites one sling and goliath goes down low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory Cover us with your wings. No, 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 like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Please sit down. Is God helping us? Yes. So, all of the dimensions that we seek to walk in in the kingdom. They have a body of spiritual truth that is responsible for their lifting. You are a blessing 
only when you move with these truths they follow you listen the Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe do you know what that means when I see what is following you it's a report card to what you believe so when I see favor and open doors following you they are not following you they are following what you believe if you want to drive them don't ask them to go change what you believe they will leave there are many things we do not want in our lives you don't drive them by saying leave me they are were designed to honor that belief if you take it out of your life they will leave you with it hallelujah let's wrap up tonight indices to measure spiritual growth let me give you four spiritual indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth pray in the spirit in one minute as you are seated four indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth thank you jesus ah. from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends someone's life is changing my goodness from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the god of all flesh you're my god and your name is yahweh your name is yahweh yahweh oh my god and your name is yahweh Down. now please let me have your attention we're about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit and with it challenge ourselves let me give you an advice never be ashamed when the Word of God comes sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame when minister frecker was here he said we should lift our hands like children that is the attitude he said let the little children come to me he says do not forbid them for for such the kingdom of god requires childlike approach i come to you with my heart open and he vets you in light of his truth then you repent repentance is not a word for sinners it's the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns is called repentance number one the first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom write it please is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience of Jesus experientially or in experience Colossians chapter 1 chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 oh dear let's see if we can hurry up and just walk on these scriptures Colossians 1 verse 3 it says if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God keep reading verse 2 it says set your affections he's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life set your affection something about your affection reveals your level of growth set your affection on things above he never said don't have the things of the earth but set your affection when your obsession becomes on money on titles on i must make it i must achieve it it is good to aspire to be great but if that's what controls your heart you are far from growth set your affection let's hurry up on things above not on things of the earth verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God verse 4 very quickly I'll run through it it says when Christ who is our life shall appear 
then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory uh-huh now mortify therefore your members that means you have a responsibility mortify your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil what's that word and covetousness which is idolatry verse verse 6 it says for which things sake the wrath of god cometh upon the children of disobedience seven in the which ye also walk in some time when ye lived in them eight but now put off all these believers are we together maybe you should read the rest from here one anger number two number three number four number five nigerians repeat number five dear wonderful citizens of this great country reveal try number five again number verse nine La, hi, ah, do i say this one now <laughs> don't worry we are together god is helping us we are growing in the name of jesus christ it says lie not to one another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds verse 10 and have put on a new man hallelujah that new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 11 we're reading to 15 where there is neither yoruba nor hausa nor south south nor northern nor middle beltan it says but christ is all and in all let me tell you this you really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory it shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Then it helps you to accurately get where you are coming from. It is proof that you are not transformed. You should be so transformed. We, we, should, be, we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory. That when you tell people where you are coming from, they say it's not true. How come you are so refined? You tell them the process is called growth. Growth. Called out of every tribe and tongue and nation into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory let's finish up the scripture put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved uh-huh bowels of mercy uh-huh kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another it says if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye 14. it says above all these things put on love charity there is love he calls it the bond of maturity the zenith of your maturity we're coming there 15 the last verse it says and let the peace of god garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and in all that you do do not forget to be thankful so ingratitude is proof that you are a child are we blessed write this scripture we may not read it second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 it tells us we can add to our faith certain spiritual qualities it says add to your faith virtue virtue means moral excellence add to virtue knowledge since they projected it let's just read on verse 6 add to knowledge self-control or temperance add to self-control patience add to patience godliness seven add to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love this love thing again is god helping us the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, popular scripture and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. While I was studying for this meeting, if we can have it, um, if we can have it, give us the Passion Translation. Is that possible? The Passion Translation. Very powerful. The Passion Translation. If, if we can't get that, that that's all right. The Passion Translation. It puts it in a very very exceptional and interesting way 
that's all right you can you can just give us the version we have if the passion translation is not there but it's, it's really very powerful i just thought that if we look at it um okay yeah let's just go back to king james apologize for that but the fruit of the spirit is love the passion translation says the, the it says the fruit which the holy spirit works out through a recreated human spirit is love expressed in its various forms then it now begins to say joy peace very very powerful are we together but let's work with what we have the bible says the fruit of the spirit that means the fruit that the holy spirit produces in a recreated human spirit is love and um in its the original translation is not just love joy peace it's just love one word love but that that love expresses itself in joy are we together peace so joy is a subset of love peace is a subset of love long suffering or patience gentleness goodness faith 23 meekness temperance it says against such there is no law there is no prohibition to walking in this your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ when people look at you they should remember Jesus not you the more they see you you should be the clearest representation of Jesus that they can see not by preaching something about the dexterity of the formation of Christ in you should make people desire Jesus are we together it is my prayer all the time that Christ be formed in me the formation of Christ it is my prayer that I will not just be a man of God who is preaching but that at least my life becomes a worthy representation that you can look at your life and say my God this man truly is a reflection of Jesus it's a noble comment it's more than saying you're a successful man you are beautiful That's what happens when you become like him. You are beautiful in all your ways. Character. We must trust God by the grace of God to be men and women of solid character. If your preaching is the only thing that reveals you as a Christian, you are not a solid Christian. If your seed is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, if your praying in tongues is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, something is wrong. Look at those who follow Jesus. Even when they tried to deny him, they had been so transformed. They looked at them and said, no, no, no. You are lying that you don't know him, but th there is something. Can you be that transformed that no matter how you pretend, someone will say, Kai, it looks like you are a pastor. You say, well, I, I'm just, I'm just, they say, no, 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 no. Men shall call you ministers of our God. That in your office, the moment they want to bribe, as soon as you enter, they stop. You don't say anything, you don't judge blessings to everybody this is the day the Lord has made your presence becomes such an inconvenience to darkness character it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you my heart my life and everything that I have it all belongs to you let's hurry up we're wrapping up number two the second biblical index to measure your spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom index number two your depth of comprehension your depth of knowledge 
your depth of understanding of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom the degree to which you have an understanding of the principles that govern this kingdom is the degree to which you are matured spiritually look up please the bible says in matthew 25 when you read from verse 14 the parable of the talents i'll just pick one or two things there give us verse 14 please matthew 25 it says for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants watch this and delivered unto them his goods verse 15 it says he gave unto one how many talents help me five talents number two to the other two talents and then the third one it says unto every man according to his several ability he did not give them according to his love for them meaning that he had watched them for a while and the end of the story shows he was correct because the man with five was the most responsible the one the man with five had a lot to fight he had pride to fight being the one with the highest talent he overcame pride and was still focused and diligent the man with two had jealousy to fight because knowing there was somebody above him he conquered jealousy and still produced that the man with one you bury seeds not talents and he buried this, the talent and came you can see that he was already offended when they asked for him he says you are a hard man you like reaping where you didn't sow and so i thought to even pity you i buried it here is your talent and he said you are a wicked number one number two unprofitable servant hallelujah god gives unto men according to their ability that has come from their growth ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 it says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think here's the scripture not according to his power according to the power that works in us the dam brings water but the the amount of water that ends up in your bucket is according to the size of the tap not according to the potential of the dam you can turn your tap just once and it will be a drop and it will take you almost a day to have a bucket full is that true and someone can turn the tap very fast and within a minute the bucket is full the problem is not the dam the dam has the potential to fill as many buckets according to the power that works in us the capacity the day i found this i found out that the limitation in the dispensing of the grace of god is not just god's problem there is something about my capacity that needs to be built so that I can host superior dimensions of his presence and it became my pursuit to enlarge Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42 Jesus lamented two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible number one was at John Lazarus tomb when he wept because of his compassion second was this over jerusalem three reasons i meant to say see the third well he, the bible says he cried he was sweat but it was like drops of blood it says when he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it why did he weep 42 saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto your peace it says but now they are hid from your eyes jesus wept over jerusalem and said jerusalem jerusalem that's the original translation if you had known even in this your time the things that pertain to your peace peace there means your wholeness but now they are hid from your eyes we must contend for spiritual truth listen to me we must contend for dimensions of truth that equip us and help us to be matured to manifest the fullness of the life and the power of God. Number three, the third biblical index that measures spiritual growth, write it down, is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life. We know that you are matured to the degree to which we can see 
the tangible manifestation of the power and the ability of the spirit in your life the outworkings of the ability of the Spirit of God in your life. Please write this down. I think I confused two scriptures. Let me give you a scripture that had to do with depth of comprehension. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20. It says, be not children in understanding. I'm seeing two scriptures I omitted here. Be not children in understanding. 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Be not children in understanding. Write it down, please. Then write down Colossians 1 verse 9. The Bible says Paul was praying over the church in Colossae. That's over point two now. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, wisdom, and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. The outworkings of his power in your life. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. The Bible says, but in a great house. Look at me, please. It is not the vessels that make the house great. It is the builder. Even though there are all kinds of vessels, it's still called a great house. But in a great house, please keep the scripture there. It says, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of clay. It says some vessels are destined unto honor. Some vessels are unto dishonor. What is the condition? Verse 2. If a man will purge himself from this, prune yourself from this, you shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Let me tell you this. By the grace of God, I know a bit about the power of God. I know a bit about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have seen the power and the grace of God. I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing. I can tell you this the vessel is a very important subject as far as impartation and the administration of spiritual power is concerned the vessel can make the oil look small in 2nd Kings chapter 4 the woman who was owing her husband died the Bible says the prophet came and said what do you have in your house he said nothing that little jar that could feed her was listening to the conversation too because the anointing is a living thing so the anointing was hearing and saying you are calling me small and the prophet said you don't know the problem is not the oil the problem is the kind of vessel holding it go and borrow vessels expand he said borrow not a few when she borrowed it now said to pour the oil the oil began to multiply to assume the shape of the vessel the anointing will only be as effective as the maturity of the vessel administering it the outworkings of the power of God there has to come a time in your life whether you are in ministry or not active ministry like we know you cannot remain with God growing spiritually truly and then get to a point where the outworkings of the power of God is not visible in your life it's impossible Someday you should be able to speak over someone and his and doors change. Someday you should be able to come into your family. Help him, please. There has to be the reality. Listen to me, please. If you're a man of God here, let me tell you, it's not all about power manifestation, but there has to be a, an investment of the spirit upon your life. There must be a signature of the spirit. Then your word become like the words of God. That lady wearing black. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. Yes. That lady looking at me. I stretch my hands right now. Something is happening to you. Help her please. I'm seeing oil being poured on her. This is what happens. This is the place of encounter.
the doors of destiny only open to power. There are doors that have no keys. You break them. Not every door has a key. No, sir. If the door has a key, what you need is a mystery. But if the door does not have a key, what you need is power. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron. Do something. Please help them. There must be an effulgence. I vowed a vow to God that if I ever meet a man and I hold you and I pray for you, I will go for a retreat if your life does not change. I'm not bragging. This is how to be a blessing. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus. Not just that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about. It takes more than a good heart. It takes more than a compassionate heart. Our loved ones will continue to go down with us just being compassionate. It takes power. Take power to your family. Take power to your business. Take power to your ministry. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. It will take more than a good sermon to bring members. It will take the power of the Holy Ghost. There are real demons. Demons are real. Demons are real. Politics are real. The Messianic prophecy says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. Listen to me. One testimony that was shared here was produced by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your Bible says His divine power. It says, according as His divine power hath given us. The giver is His divine power. If you stand and watch doors like that, you will watch it forever. You will need to obtain power from on high. Samson remained helpless provided there was no power. But when grace came upon his life, you see so when you come to church like this don't see this strange is it not written in your bible that well peter yet speak these things it says the holy ghost fell on them that had him so you go back home with an experience and like the psalmist you can say i was glad when they said to me let us go how could your life remain the same my brothers and my sisters, it's impossible. Not the God of the Bible. The power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in power. I've had the opportunity in ministry to see what power can do to lives. Political careers. It takes power to enthrone kings. It's not just prophecy. When you speak, there must be grace that backs it. I am a man under authority, the centurion said. And I can tell one, go, and he goeth. The power is, and he goeth. Not that I said go. I said go, and he goeth. Come, and he cometh. So you say open, and it opens. Close, and it closes. Listen, may grace come on your life this night. That many of you will return back home. And in the name of Jesus, you will stand. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Help them, please. I decree and declare, you will go back home like the foxes of Samson, carrying supernatural power, power to dislodge the workings of darkness. In the name of, help that woman, please. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. Can I speak to you? Everything that has refused to work, by this time next week, I stand by the spirit and the grace of God in the name of Jesus I command it to begin to walk I speak by the spirit of God help help that woman please every response you should receive you heard their testimonies I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood every frustration over over your destiny I release you from it now Please sit down. 
we're wrapping up this is koinonia number four the fourth and the last index for measuring your spiritual growth is called your love life we're wrapping up I'm opening doors, opening doors. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I'm opening doors. You will think I'm joking, but you'll be surprised to see what happens. I'm opening doors. This is what God is saying. I said before you, he says, an open door that no man can shut. I'm opening doors. This is God speaking to someone. I don't know who that person is, but you came here with hunger. I stand by the grace from heaven and I declare those doors, those doors be open for the sake of his majesty. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Help that woman, please. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. Listen to me. Please, next week, don't come to church alone. Don't come to church alone. Don't leave your loved ones behind. No. Even if they will sit on the roof, let them sit there. One encounter with the power of God can open ages, chapters that have been closed. Hallelujah. We are wrapping up. We have about 10 minutes and we are done for tonight. Please be patient with me. Listen, please. The fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth according to scripture is your love life. When you read 1 John chapter 4, this is a very important subject. Your love life. Madam, that woman, come. No, 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 you, please, you don't have to stand up at random. Where are you coming from? What's your name? I'm hearing a name of Payemi. What's your name? Of Payemi. The Lord is saying I should tell you this week coming. This week you see coming. From Monday tomorrow. You will come and stand here. The way doors will open in your life. It will surprise you. I stretch my hands and I bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you drink of this grace and you return back with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Let's finish up. First John chapter 7. Chapter 4, please. Chapter 4 from verse 7. Let's hurry up, please. We're wrapping up. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Verse 8. It says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Keep verse 8. But the text is down to 21. It says, Whoever does not love, it is proof that you don't know God. No matter how you convince yourself. Something about your love life. If you love God and hate men, you are not born again. Many people love Jesus only because they can't see him. If they see Jesus for one week, he will join all those they have hated. Love. I love him with all my heart. Let me tell you this. One of the secrets to the grace of God upon my life it's not just prayer and fasting alone it is sincere love god has given me that grace and it's been a prayer lord may i not use people may i not use members to make a name let let them see the passion the love that whilst you are sleeping i'm praying for you and i'm saying lord lift them open doors for them huh not just coming to collect Bless. my greatest joy is not my lifting my greatest joy is your rising hallelujah your love life 
John 13 and verse 35 by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you preach well not when you share revelations 13 35 John by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another the first core value help that lady the first core value in this ministry is not power is love love is very powerful first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31 very interesting scripture as we seek to wrap up very powerful scripture never forget this for the rest of your life haven't discussed the manifestation the gifts of the spirit as charismatic as they are it says but covet earnestly the best gift and yet i show you after prophecy after word of knowledge after healing i show you a more excellent way 13 verse 1 what is the more excellent way the way to do it in love though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love i am become as a sounding brass oh dear i wish we can get the voice or that well for next time i'm sure that our media will help us with that i am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal it says verse 2 let's go to verse 2 now it says if i have the gift of prophecy and i understand all mysteries if you become this man people will look for you till they kill you you know all mysteries and prophecy and you have all knowledge you have all faith you can move mountains but you do not have love he says i am nothing look how little we weigh in the spirit without love in the physical they can be clapping apostle joshua selman but in the realm of the spirit you weigh so small verse 3 the bible says if i donate all my goods to feed the poor i give my body to be burned and i do not have love he says i gain nothing verse 4 let's hurry up please love is patient if it is true love love is kind if it is true love love does not envy nigerians love is not boastful it is not conceited verse 5 it says does not act improperly love is not selfish it's not easily provoked or easily angered does not keep a record of wrongs hmm. Verse 6, it says, finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. 7, we're almost there. It says, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8, this is the love you talk about. Love never fails. Now we can go back to KJV so that we can wrap it up. It says, verse 9, for we know in part love never fails listen to my message love never fails business people if the bible tells you there is something that does not fail look for it that means whatever is failing add love to it it will change the equation love never fails but whether there be prophecies they shall fail the most accurate of us is still limited whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away my goodness verse 9 it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part verse 10 but when that which is perfect is come that which is imperfect shall go away 11 it says when i was a child back to our scripture now let's go to verse 12 we've read that we have to rush it says for now we see through a glass darkly but face to face we know in part then we shall even know as we are known 13 and now there abided faith that moves mountains. If you have faith in today's world, you are a great mountain mover. If you have hope, there is no shame for you because hope has a way of eroding shame. It says, and of these three, the greatest is love. The greatest is not power. The greatest is not signs and wonders. The greatest is not prophecy and revelatory gifts. The, pro the greatest is not accuracy of the exegesis of doctrine. Those things are wonderful. But according to divine rankings, the zenith of your transformation is not knowledge, it's love. Love. It is my desire that more than preaching, 
that I will truly become a lover of God and a lover of men to love men to love men sincerely you are not spiritually growing to the degree to which you pile hate in your heart you have all kinds of black books no no tonight may be a word from the Lord and say look you need to pack up that nonsense you need to be light to fly when you are heavy these weights press you down it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight right and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us we're going to pray and ask the Lord to grant us grace to desire growth from the depth of your heart God is training us God is building us please rise up on your feet two prayer points tonight very quickly prayer point number one father grant me the grace the grace to grow intentionally lift your voice and begin to pray inside outside lift your voice and pray the grace to grow intentionally I am tired of this level in the spirit I desire to grow from today I make my spiritual growth an intentional pursuit there is a lot that depends on my growth hallelujah praise the Lord the last prayer point father grant me the grace to reveal Jesus from today through my life through all of these dimensions are we together now through my character through the dexterity of my spiritual understanding through the outworkings of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life and by the demonstration of love let men see Christ exalted Christ revealed in my life lift your voice and pray those outside pray overflows pray following online lift your voice and pray hallelujah praise the Lord I'm about to make the altar call please be patient there are a few very important announcements I need to communicate before we wrap up for tonight but there are people here listening some of you came here you were invited some of you are in the overflows some outside some following online from whatever nation and you're saying apostle hearing you speak I cannot for sure say that Jesus is Lord of my life I have a desire for him but I don't seem to have truly found him others are saying one time I gave my life to Jesus but as it is now my life has gone haywire and I need to bring my life back to order these two categories of people now for all of the overflows and outside you just move to your projector screen and then those in the main auditorium I like you to run and come and stand here it will be my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus I'll count one to five please I like you to come one let's honor them koinonia come to Jesus God bless you win that war tonight win that war tonight win that war God bless you keep coming don't be ashamed of anyone no one condemns you this is a house of love come 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 he's given you a new beginning come all overflows move to your overflows look at these our wonderful children let's celebrate them come come Minister Freke taught us and he said if he's not in his presence and if it is not by his hand if it is not by his word it's not just don't let me have it you really can't have it you have decided to follow Jesus no turning back 
Titanic sank there were only two names if ever you were saved there was your name if you were lost your name was there there's nothing like being in between no if you are not saved you're not saved if you are not sure you are not saved I salute every single one of you listen until the day Jesus comes we will never stop participating in the global harvest dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this Jesus message do not keep the video to Someday yourself share to as many as you can people. to help and them and look at us and say, Thank check God. our home page for Thank more God of our messages for me subscribe to the channel I am alive. comment on it like that it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. Grant Make this most noble prayer is greater than receiving an award. Is greater than receiving an employment letter is greater than rising up from a wheelchair this is the security of your eternal destiny lift your right hand high to the heavens pray this from the depth of your heart say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i love you i have heard your word tonight i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in exchange be my Savior be my Lord be my King forever I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness I reign in life amen Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these precious ones. They have become, by their confession, members of the family of heaven. And it's an honor to welcome them to this family that so represents your voice and your counsel at this side of your kingdom. I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. May you become mighty men and women of the spirit. And I pray that the Lord himself will do wonders in and through your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Now, very quickly, there's a counselor. There are counselors waving a placard for you. All of you, I want you to please move in concert. Just follow um, the counselors. Celebrate them as they go. Celebrate them as they go. Bless you, darlings. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen, just some very important announcements. I have to welcome our first timers. I sincerely apologize. We're done in a moment, but you need to hear this. It's very important. Um, by the grace of God, you've seen what God has done in the ministry. It is so overwhelming. We're opening up more doors for the workforce. The first time we opened. Yes. Thank you. Now. Let me explain to you why many people are clapping. Because um, the first time we opened up doors for workforce, we had over 4,000 people, and we had to cut them down to about 10% of them. Uh, almost, I think it was a work, almost everybody here, the size, you know, applied for it. But now we're applying to specific departments, the security and traffic control, and then the the um, protocol and logistics department 
we also have ushers we need ushers you see how many people were flying up and down under the anointing we need a lot of ushers to help us now if you are interested by let's say three hours after tonight's service please go to our social media platforms especially our facebook and instagram platform can you project it for them to see please so that you can you can tender your application there three hours after the service it will be up just click and then put in your names we'll allow only two days for this that means by the end of tuesday and wednesday the doors will be closed and um so you please write your name ushers those who want to be part of the ushering team those who want to be part of our protocol and logistics department those who want to be part of the security and traffic control praise the name of the lord we'll take them gradually please make sure you have um those down and then it will also the, the our global page that you have and you know you can also will make sure that it is there also so that you can click on it and then follow very quickly praise the name of the lord now i want to honor those who are coming here for the first time last week we were all first timers including me but now we're one week old so we're no longer first timers praise the name of the lord this is your first time worshiping with us here please i like you we're all standing but just wave your beautiful hands to jesus my good my goodness my goodness outside wave your hands all the overflows let's celebrate jesus for them thank you um now very quickly please keep your hands lifted every one of you a few officials will be handing to you our visitors card it's in two parts the first part is for your information it, it your consumption it contains information about the ministry our activities what we stand for our mandate especially in this city please do well to tear the first half you can go home with it is yours um, is both a, an instrument for your edification and knowledge and also let it go with you as a mantle in the name of Jesus and then the second half will plead that you quickly our time is up but quickly would like you to feel it as um, let it be as clear as you can let it be very legible please feel it very quickly and then you can leave it on your desk there or pass it to an official that will be standing by your side uh, by next week we'll do well to do the welcome of visitors just somewhere in the middle of the service before i come up so that we can 